Our GYA initiative is one of many ways Victory is providing hope, healing, and empowerment through generosity and outreach. When you GYA give yourself away, you are supporting efforts to be the church. When the state of Texas was hit with historic freezing temperatures, it left people across the state without power, heat, and water damage from busted pipes. Many were without food, water, essential needs, and shelter in the middle of a global pandemic. Your GYA giving allows us to support efforts like this that provide for individuals and families in need. Your giving is making a difference in Texas through donations to two Texas organizations, the Houston Food Bank, which distributes food and other essentials to those in need. Your giving to GYA allowed us to provide over 2,500 meals to families in Houston and to the Austin Area Urban League. We helped provide several weeks of shelter to families who need it the most. Thank you for your continued support and for being the church. As you can see, your giving is making a difference and giving has been made simple. Text Get the Victory, Get the Victory BC or Get the Victory VC to 77977. Select the giving link, enter the amount and gift type. If it's your first time giving, you can enter your payment details, then simply confirm your gift. You can also cash app Get the Victory by downloading the app in the Apple or Google Play Store. Thank you for your generosity. Praise the Lord, family. I'm so glad that you're here again. Thank you for coming to worship with us and welcome to victory. You are walking in victory. All my victory walkers stand up. Say, 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 I am a victory walker. I am a victory walker. I am. Do you know what that means? That means that you're walking in victory. Let me, show you, let me take it a little step further. You are living victoriously because you are putting the principles of God's word into practice and he is fulfilling every one of his promises you are a victory walker and i'm so grateful so humbled and so excited to have you to worship with us here's the secret sauce i don't know if you figured that's this thing out but when you pray i preach that's all to it your prayers push us further into the presence of god so we can see the promises of god manifested thank you for being prayer warriors, for interceding for the pastor, for the ministry team, for all the, the, the media team and all the production team and the, the marketing team and everybody else on the teams that are pushing this ministry forward, even in the midst of a pandemic. God is doing amazing things. Oh, you don't believe it? Let, let, me, let me just, let me stop and testify. In the midst of a pandemic, we have seen God enlarge our territory. We have reached beyond our, our own thoughts or what we've asked God to do. He is literally blowing our minds. I don't think I celebrated this with you, but one Sunday, one Sunday, we had 99,000 people to worship with us in victory. Just one Sunday. Don't tell me what God cannot do, even in the midst of a painful pandemic. And not only that, if you haven't figured it out, because we do a great job at covering it up and masking it so you don't know, but we're not in the sanctuary. Yeah, we're not in the sanctuary. I know it, some of you didn't think that you, you knew that because you know, you know, you're just so detail oriented. Some of you knew that, but most of you didn't know that we're not in our sanctuary. Why? Because our sanctuary is being renovated right now. God is doing amazing things. We're growing south side i was at victory city all day yesterday i cannot even wait to tell you what god is about to do for victory city victory city y'all hold on stand up pastor's coming we got a whole lot of work to do on that side of town and god is sending help and resources and everything else that we need i promise you you don't want to miss what god is about to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think that's what God is about to do, not just in his house, but if you're connected to this ministry, I pray that the same favor that is falling on his house will emanate into your house, will saturate your house, will bless everything and everybody connected to his house. You've been faithful. You've been diligent. Giving has not waned. You've been so faithful and so diligent. Serving has not dissipated. Every time we call on those who, who need to come so we can serve other people, so we can give out food, so we can go and minister and do outreach, you show up. And God is not sleep. No, he never sleeps nor slumbers. He, see, he sees what the faithfulness looks like. 
and let me tell you this as faithful as we may think we have been our faithfulness has nothing on God you think you we, you think we were faithful no 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 great is his faithfulness and watch God work watch him blow your mind watch him bless you watch him literally open up the window of heaven pour out blessings that you not have room enough to receive he says this is how I'll give it to you good measure press down so he can get some more on top of it shaking together he's gonna remove all the air pockets and running over expect God to send people to pour into your life it's a great season y'all it's a phenomenal season and I'm excited to share it with you to God be the glory now if you're ready for the word brace yourself and say I'm ready come on in the chat room blow me up I'm ready say pastor I'm ready no I'm ready okay now remember you said it no some of y'all be sleeping you, you think I don't see you I'm watching you in this chat room I'm ready there it is I see you there you go all right there you go I see you now listen the reason I said brace yourself is because you need to brace yourself <laughs> don't play with it brace yourself because the revelation and the word that God has given me to grace us on this month we're starting a new season turning the corner on a new series it's going to be challenging it will be challenging okay I, I didn't just say brace yourself for nothing but I know what's coming it will be challenging to your comfort I have asked God help me grace me with the words and the anointing of the Holy Spirit to make them uncomfortable here's why because there is no growth without discomfort God requires and desires that you grow and increase and enlarge that's his desire that's his passion for his people He's died. He came and died so that you wouldn't just have any mundane kind of life, but you would have life more abundantly. That's what he desires for you. And because of that, it takes you becoming uncomfortable so that you will stretch and expand and enlarge your territory. Here's the thing. Some of you have become too comfortable in low places. Did you get it? Yeah, I need that to set in. Some of you have become, un you've become too comfortable in lack, in want, in living less than, in being beneath. You've gotten too comfortable at the bottom. God says, I made you to be seated in high places in Christ Jesus. You're not supposed to be at the bottom. You're the head, not the tail above, not beneath the lender, not the borrower. You are who God's chosen people. You are the uh, elect of God. You are the set aside, the set apart. By God. You are to be the template, the design, the example. You are ambassadors of the Spirit of God. You, you possess the power of God. And as a result, God desires for you to live above only. That's what the text says. Read the word. Above only, not beneath. And so my prayer is that God would give me what I need to push you out of your comfort zone so that you can receive the promises of God. Amen? Oh yeah, amen's got real light right through there. <laughs> no, no, amen? Amen. All right, we together. All right, grab your Bibles, let's get to work. There is a word from the Lord and I'm excited about the privilege of preaching. It will be a little bit different, a lot of bit uncomfortable, but it will be a whole great deal fruitful. That's my prayer, all right? You ready? Here we go. Ecclesiastes 10 and 19. Ecclesiastes 10 and 19. Get your device, make note of it, underline it, do whatever it is that you do to make sure that you mark it in your heart and in your head so that you can hear it again. So you can read it to yourself, read it for yourself, that you can study to show thyself approved, a workman that need not be ashamed and you can rightly divide the word of truth for yourself. You ready? Here we go. It, it reads as follows. A feast is made for laughter and wine maketh merry, but don't miss this. Money answereth all things. Did you get that? Money answereth all things now jump over to matthew 17 24 through 27 that's where we're going to shine our sermonic spotlight the thematic the thematic text for the whole series which is called hidden figures is ecclesiastes 10 and 19 money answereth all things so i've got to teach in this particular area but i want to make sure that you know and understand that today's text today's gospel message that we're going to deal with that's going to really encourage your heart it's Matthew 17, 24 through 27. I'll read it to you aloud. Read along with me. Come on, let's go together. After Jesus and his disciples arrived in Capernaum, the collectors of the two drachma temple tax came to Peter and asked, hey, doesn't your teacher pay the temple tax? 
Peter replies, yes, he does. And then when Peter came into the house, Jesus was the first to speak. What do you think, Simon? From whom do the kings of the earth collect duties and taxes from their own children or from others? Peter answers and says, from others. Then the children are exempt, Jesus said to him. But so that we may not cause offense, go to the lake, throw out your line, take the first fish you catch, open its mouth, you will find a four drachma coin. Take it, give it to them for my taxes and yours. Amen. Let's pray. God, I need your help. I need the anointing of the Holy Spirit to give me preaching power cannot function, cannot move, cannot do this incredible task without you. Stand up in me as I stand for you. And I ask God that the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart would be acceptable and pleasing in your sight and that ultimately you will get the glory. And I come against every demonic thing that has kept our minds and our homes and our legacies and our bloodlines in bondage. We will no longer live beneath our divine privilege. We want what you have for us to receive. So speak, God. We're listening. We cancel every demonic curse that has been put onto our families. We will not live in lack and want, but we will be your prosperous and abundant people and great ambassadors of a kingdom's cause. Thank you in advance for what you are about to do in us, through us, to us, and for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, shout hallelujah in the chat room. If you're ready, shout hallelujah. Now, tell the folks in the chat room, find a name. It doesn't matter, any name, because y'all don't talk to each other enough. I know we can't fellowship in person, but you can fellowship in the, in the chat room. Come on, find a name that you see down there and just tell them, you know, say at them, whatever their name is, at their screen name, I'm ready. Brace yourself. I'm ready. Brace yourself. Did you tell them? Now, if you saw your name scroll through there real quick, chat back with them and do at whatever their screen name and say, I got you. <laughs> you got it? This is how we got a fellowship. I'm telling you, we need, to, we need a fellowship with one another. We miss each other so much. So this is one way that we know we're connected and we're talking to real people. Amen. Listen, we all have something in common. Every one of us, every person. Every one of us, no matter what situation in life, no matter where you are, no matter where you're from, where you're going, what your job is, what your vocational uh, 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 pr uh, profession is, what, what you do, what you don't do, every one of us has something in common. All of us, at some juncture or another, has to deal with money. Either you deal with what you have or you deal with what you don't have. You either deal with increase or you deal with lack, you deal with want or you deal with blessings and favor or enough. But all of us have to deal with money. And so I thought it was befitting that I did a series, Hidden Figures, or a series that deals with money. Because a lot of times we find our insight and we find our truth or we find our wisdom on specific topics outside of the context of church. Or better, even better than that, outside of the context of God's word. But what better place to study something that every one of us has to deal with than in the word or in the church of Jesus Christ. And so I thought it was, it's not robbery that we take a moment and we actually get really deep, real practical, real spiritual. You get that? Practical and spiritual. So a lot of times we want to be spiritual. Oh, God will. God will send an increase. Oh, the Lord will make a way. How will he do it, Reverend? Somehow. No, I need to take it a step further. I need to show you what somehow looks like, Okay. I don't want us to just major in the what, but I want us to deal with the how. All right? That's what we're going to do this month. It's going to be a great month. I promise you. You want to ride with me because I've got, I've got backup. I'm bringing help in this series. I brought some professionals to the table who can tell us how the Lord desires, requires, and even gives wisdom and strategy in dealing with and handling our money. And let me start with this biblical truth that, that is exceptionally obvious. That all of us can testify and all of us can attest to if you really think deeply about it. And here it is, that money answereth all things. That's not my opinion. That's not what's coming out of my own heart. 
It's not just locked in my head, but that is in the word of God. It is in the Bible. And what do you mean by that, Pastor? Let me break it down. In most things, most everything that you do, you will need or it will take money. If you want water in your household, guess what? You better have some money. Because if you don't pay the water bill, guess what? You will not have water. If you want to take a vacation, yes, it's going to take some money. Doing ministry, now this may be mind-blowing. It takes money. All the shouting and dancing and singing and praising in the world doesn't keep the lights on. Doesn't make sure that you have heat or air. Doesn't pay for the cushioned seats that y'all can't wait to get back to. Even doesn't pay for the cameras and the equipment and the lighting and the staging and, and the people who are operating all of these tech, all this technology to make sure that you still have ministry in this season. Guess what? It takes money. And I'll take it even a step further and beyond that. If you want to live healthy, there are many of us in this time and in this season, we've decided, okay, COVID-20 has really had its run, but we need to change this and turn this thing around. So we want to start eating healthy so we can live better. And COVID has given us all a wake-up call so that we now want to be in a position and a posture where our bodies can defend itself, where our cells and our, our cellular structure and infrastructure has the capacity to, to fight off foreign diseases. We, we all are in that space and in that place in that mindset now because the reality of our mortality is right here upon us. So most of us, we've got to a place where we say, okay, we got to start eating healthy. Well, in case you didn't know, eating healthy costs a lot of money. Yeah, I know there's some, there's some workarounds, there's some cutarounds, but most of the things you've seen in cities, in urban centers, my Victory City can attest to this, there are a lot of food deserts. There's a lot of places that don't exist that have healthy options. And all you see is fast food, greasy food, and, and it's easy, it's quick, it's fast, but it, it also diminishes and, 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 and pulls down your health very fast. So it takes money. Let me tell you how I came to know this. I went to the health food store. I won't even call their name because I don't want to give free publicity. But I went to a healthy grocery store. You know, wink, wink, the one that is around the country that everybody goes to when they want to live a holistic lifestyle. Wink, wink. Did you get it? If you didn't get it, just pray about it. God will show you. <laughs> but it takes money. I went to the counter. I had a whole lot of stuff. It was my first time shopping here. I put a whole lot in my basket. I mean, I piled it up. Oh, this looks healthy, and this looks good. This looks nice. And I get to the counter, and I, and I beep, beep. And so eventually I stopped, and I looked up at her screen, and I saw the number. I said, no, nah, is that her social security number? Because surely that can't be my bill. Surely that, that well, she didn't put her social security number on the screen. No, I, I, was, I was literally flabbergasted and blown away because I'm like, surely I didn't get that much. She said, that'll be $500. I said, ah, <laughs> Uh, uh, um, and you know, I had a moment, I had a moment where, you know, the righteous self or the, 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 the reasonable self or the, the person who, you know, wasn't prideful and egotistical said, you know, you don't want to pay all of that money or, you know, you shouldn't be paying that much for this stuff. So you should put some of that back. And then I turned and I looked behind me in line and I did like most of us. I said, no, I can't be embarrassed. I can't be shamed. I said, I got to go on and pay for it. I pulled my credit card out. And then I gave her a credit card, and, and she charged me the $500. And then I, got, I did like most of us do. I got to the car, and I started feeling horrible. I got sick in my stomach. I said, I can't believe I just paid $500 for this stuff. I thought it was healthy. It's going to give me a heart attack. Yeah, because I almost lost my mind that it cost that much just to eat healthy. You want to know why our health why African Americans and people of color are suffering so much in such greater capacity in this particular season during a pandemic because it costs a lot of money to stay healthy. It costs a lot of money to stay healthy. I mean, if you want to go and, and have regular checkups, my, I have insurance, but my copay has gone up so much so that when I went the last time to the doctors for a regular visit, when, when the lady said, Is this your copay? I said, Unfortunately, she says, My goodness. Even the nurse said it's too high. So money answereth all things. Now, watch this. It doesn't mean that you have to have a lot of money in order to do some of these things. There are some very strategic and creative people. I got some people right here with me who know how to make it work. And you do it in, in an excellent way, not just cutting corners, but you actually do it in excellence. 
So I'm not saying it always has to be a lot of money to do all of these things, but it will take some level of resources to do all of these things and anything that you endeavor to do. You have to have some level of resources to contribute toward whatever it is that you're trying to do. Money answereth all things. You got it? Put that way you can fill it. Now, in order to be completely healthy, or in order to be a healthy and holistic person, you need to learn the value of managing and harnessing not just your spiritual strength. Oh, I know I got some people out here that can pray you under a seat, that can literally turn heaven upside down with the power and the efficacy and all the anointing and the grace that is on their lives. But you need to learn how to harness not just your spiritual power, but even your physical resources, so that especially your money, so that you can make a kingdom impact, not just in your prayers. Sometimes I don't need you to just pray for me. Sometimes I need you to sow into what it is that you're praying for. Are you with me? Yeah. Yeah. Amazingly enough, there are these people who preach salvation, talk about the goodness of the Lord. They put a little note in their voice and they sing and they preach and they pray like Paul and the angels. But then you look at their bank account. Now, I'm not saying I'm a gold digger. Okay, I'm going to leave that right there. I'm going to drop it. I ain't going to push it. I promise I'm done. That's it. Okay? But you've got to learn to live above poverty. And it's not, if God is the author of, and he is the finisher of our faith and he is the authority over the resources of the world, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein, then God is able and capable and willing to deposit abundant life on you. He is willing to bless you until it blows your mind exceeding abundantly above all you can even ask or think. God's desire is that you have abundant life. So why is it that we want to preach from an impoverished gospel? Oh, I want you to get this. And I'm not talking about these get rich quick schemes. I'm not talking about this prophet lying. I'm not talking about, hey, I just wiped my anointed sweat on this. If you send me $9.99, I'm going to give it to you. You lay it on your body and you'll be completely healed and never have to deal with illness again. No, I'm not talking about gimmicks. I'm talking about foundational principles that are not mysterious, that are not hidden. They're really revealed in the word of God. It's not that hard. And those who are not able to dig for themselves, he gives resources. He gives financial planners. He gives all kind of uh, YouTube videos and he gives courses and classes and, and he even gives your pastor some capacity of experiential knowledge so that I will be bold enough to share it with you. You ought to be tired of the enemy beating you up in the area of your financial health. Yeah, I know that you've been praying in all these other areas, but we think that supernaturally this, this other area is just going to fix itself. It's just going to come together. No, you have to do the work. That's the bottom line. It will take work. And here's the challenge. A lot of people work to impress people on the outside, but you have little resources or a track record of poverty on the inside. Yet, you're trying to convince people that they should sh sign up for the Christianity that, that you have or, or serve the Jesus that you have when you live such an impoverished existence. How are you going to tell somebody that this is the way to live, that living for God, living for Christ is the way when you look so impoverished, when your circumstance and your situation is what it is and you know what it is? No, I'm talking to you. No, I'm, no, not them. I'm talking to you. You know what it is. See, how can you win people to Jesus and live beneath your privilege, struggling from paycheck to paycheck? I told you all to brace yourselves. I tried to tell you up front because this is going to be very real, very raw, but it's also going to be very right. How can you bless people and tell them, I want you to, to serve and follow Jesus? How can you win souls to Christ? But then they look at your life and your life does not look like a life that they aspire to have. Huh? I'm talking to you. Yes. See, it's hard to witness to people about the strength of a Savior who died for us to have abundant life, everlasting life. And then you turn around and maybe two sentences later, you say, let me borrow $20. Oh, yeah. I'm, 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 I told you to brace yourself. Here's what 3 John, the second chapter, or the, uh, the, the uh, second chapter, the second verse says. Beloved, I wish above all that you prosper. Prosper 
Prosper, prosper. Did you get it? Beloved, I wish above all that you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. God's desire is that we are a prosperous people. Even as means not only your soul, but I need you, your life, your lifestyle, your living. I need you as an individual to also be prosperous. Not live in poverty, live in misery. Here, here's some stats. Now, this is going to get real. We're going to get real. I'm going to sit down for this part because this might be a little bit painful for all of us. Here we go. Here's some stats. A Gallup poll found that only about one third of Americans, you got to determine which are you. Are you in the two thirds or the one third? One third of Americans, that's 32%, maintain a household budget. Only one third really have a budget. They're, everybody else is living by the seat of their pants. And watch this, only 30% of Americans have a long-term financial plan. Only 30% have a long-term financial plan that includes a saving or investment goals. The average American spends less than 4.5 hours a year in scheduled time with their finances. So that means most of us are sitting around receiving a check and we have no plan for the money when it comes into our hand. Your money comes without a strategy. Your money comes without a plan. You get it, but you don't know what it's supposed to go towards, and you haven't made preparations for it to last or to have longevity. Yeah, you're hood rich. That's what we call that in some circles. In 2017, there was a report in Market Watch that, that gives these stats. This ought to be staggering to you. 19%, 19% of all people in America have zero dollars saved to cover emergency expenses. You want to know how we know that was a true statement? This was in 2017. You don't want to know how we know? Because the pandemic told it all. You knew who really was ready to deal with an emergency crisis or a situation by what was revealed in the midst of a crisis that nobody could control. The world shut down. God reminded the universe that he is still God. And we weren't ready, those of us who weren't ready, it's revealed. I drove downtown Chicago and I cannot believe the level of businesses that had to go under. It was mind boggling yesterday. What? They're gone too? This is gone? You could see who was really not making it, but they were literally paycheck to paycheck or one month to a month. 31% have less than $500 in an emergency fund. 31% of people, and if you haven't lived in, in this economy yet, you, let me help remind you, let me, t let me make sure you know and understand, $500 doesn't take you very far at all. Not surprisingly, about 49% of Americans are concerned or anxious or fearful about their current financial well-being. That means 49% of the people that you know around you, 49% of the people watching me, 49% of Americans are worried about their finances. Come on, saints. Oh, come on, people of God. Come on. Yes. Where are you? Yeah, it, see, interestingly enough, let me give you this. Low income is not always to blame for financial hardship. There are some who fall in a, a context or in an equation that of no fault of your own, you were placed with a disadvantage and now you're living in an impoverished life or you have low income. I don't want to discount that. I'm not disqualifying that and I understand that. But listen, low income is not always to blame and you can testify of yourself. See, you're in your home right now or on your device or wherever you're watching so you can at least be honest with yourself if you won't be honest with everybody else. Only one in five people, 20% of financial hardship falls below the poverty line. So only one in five really have low income. The rest of us have low expectations, so we have low outcome. Low preparation, so we have low participation. You got it? Facing financial hardship, falling below the poverty line, which is less than $40,000 a year, most of us... Most of us can testify that we just have not, if we'll be honest, we just have not done a good job. Don't worry about it. I got you. 
We're going to turn this thing around. Your children and your children's children will be prosperous, will be wealthy, will be blessed. Your income will be restored. Everything the locust has stolen, God will restore. Everything is coming back. Don't worry about it. We we got a God who is a turnaround king. He is the one that can shift things. And in a moment's notice, your first will be last and the last will be first. So I don't want to beat you down without encouraging you and building you up. I got you. In the meantime, let's deal with some more truth. According to the Federal Reserve, I want you to watch this. I'm going to put it on the screen. Watch this. Look at this. Look at this graph. I need you to pay attention. Take a second. Look at this graph. Listen to my voice, but look at this graph. Hear me talking, but pay attention to what you see. Look at the white column. Look at the black column. Look at the Hispanic column. Look at the other column. Look at the numbers at the top, the media net worth. Come on, pay attention to it. You see it? I want to read this while you're watching that. In 2019 survey. White families have the highest level of both median and mean family income. That means means what they have in means, what they possess, median income. That means their average, $188,200 and $983,400. That's what whites have in this country. This is according to the Federal Reserve. Don't believe me? Go to federalreserve.com. You'll see it for yourself. Or .gov. You'll see it for yourself. Black and Hispanic families have considerably less wealth than white families. Black families' median and mean wealth is about 15% that of white families. And $24,100 is the median income of black families, and $142,500 is the mean income of black families. Do you see what I am saying? No, do you see what I am saying? Look at it. Look at the graph. Look at the chart. You can see for yourself. Here's why. Let me, can I just, all right, I got to turn the corner and be real. This is different. I told you to brace yourself. Get ready. I told you it's coming. Watch this. Here's our habits. Let me explain some of the reasons why I got to stand up for this part. Let me explain some of the reasons why we are in some of the shapes that we're in. Are you ready? Stick your chin out. Here we go. We would rather spend money to look rich then invest money to live wealthy. Put that way you can feel it. Yeah, here's the thing. Wealth is freedom. Financial liberty is just as important as spiritual liberty. Why? Because it gives you the capacity to do what God has called you to do, and that's to serve mankind. You can't be generous. You can't sow into somebody else if you have nothing to sow from. Yeah, you can give them a prayer. Yes, you can give them some time, but every now and then you've got to feed those who are homeless, feed those who are hungry. You've got to clothe those who are naked. And guess what? Somebody, it starts somewhere. I don't even care if you go and gather them and somebody donates them to you and that's how you redistribute it. Somebody bought it in the first place. Somebody had to manufacture it. Somebody had to pay. Somebody had to create it, even if you redistribute it. And so why not be in a position where you can do more? I can gather from them, but I can actually add to it. So, so understand that liberty and freedom, financial freedom is imperative. And that what, that, that's what brings me to this dynamic revelation. And that's what's challenging to my mind and my heart. That's what grieves me in my spirit and made me preach this series. Here it is. Slavery has not yet been abolished. If wealth is freedom, we've got a lot more work to do. We're not there yet. See, here's here's why we're in this position. You look good, but you live small. Oh, you got it together on the outside. Oh, you got it. No, you are that. You are that. But you live small. You you got you you've allowed Gucci and Louis and Prada and and all these other name brands to dictate the terms and determine the outcome of your legacy of your bloodline, of your lineage, of your position, and your posture, of your wealth. Yeah, now, and it's so bad now, you're so consumed with the brand, you've become such brand whores. Yes, I said it. Put it in the chat. Pastor said it. You've become so consumed with the brands, and you've, you've, you've allowed yourself to lose the sensibility of financial stewardship. Not just tithes and offering. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about preparing for your future. You have Gucci, Louis, and Prada, and your children have no college fund. You're preparing to get loans. And the Bible says that the borrower is a slave to the lender. 
That's why some of you are in the posture and the position that you're in. And I don't mean to beat you up, but I got to build you up. And sometimes I got to tear down some of your, your backwards thinking or some of our thinking that is anti-scriptural. So that I can build you up with the truth and the word of, who, of, of God. Are you with me? Don't leave. No, 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 no. Stay with me. Stay with me. We're riding somewhere. I promise you, I got you. Because by the time this is all done this month, you're going to be walking in such liberty and financial freedom. You're going to be on the path of leaving a, an inheritance for your children's children, which is what God says makes you good. Oh, I'm ready. Here we go. Get ready. Here we go. Now, now here's the problem. Many of us, we've gotten so consumed in brands that, that we'll, we'll, not even, we'll not even pay the full price for the brand. We go to China and we try to find knockoffs of the brands because we're so consumed with looking good on the outside, but living beneath our privilege. Yeah, yeah I'm talking about you. Yes, yes, he's talking about me. You can go ahead and put it in there if you feel it. Driving your bins. Your BMW and your used Bentley and parking it real proudly and clean. You got lipstick on your wheels. Oh, you got it together. It smells good. It looks good. But you're pulling it up to your apartment, which you don't own. Yeah, you spend thousands and thousands and thousands. If you can't say amen, just say ouch. Thousands of dollars on your hair, but you don't own the place where you lay your head. I told y'all to brace yourselves. I told you to get ready. I warned you. See, here's the problem. Social media has created a false sense of wealth. It's so fictitious that it perverts and distorts what real wealth really looks like. Can I help y'all out? Let me help some of y'all out. Real wealth is quiet and small. Yeah. That's real wealth. Real wealth People who are loud <laughs> about what they have and always have to have a symbol or an emblem showing in their photos, those are really not wealthy people. Yeah, they even stage the photos. See, wealthy people will put their emblems and their symbols in a photo <laughs> because they want you to buy it because they bought into it. They're making money off of your purchase of it. But, but rich people, Hood rich people especially, they will stage the photo to make sure that you see the emblem. Put the shopping bags right there so that it looks like exactly, you see the Burberry sign right here. They will literally say cheese and play like, oh, I didn't realize that Gucci bag was there. No, that's, you rich, but you ain't wealthy. And, and most of you ain't even rich because you buying it on credit. Or you buying it because you laying down with, okay, that's another story. Let me, whoops, whoop, whoop, back it up. Yeah, I'm getting real. I told you it's going to be real. It's going to be raw, but it's going to be right. I promise you that. Watch this. Real wealth is quiet. Wealth, real, real wealth doesn't have to boast. Real wealth doesn't have to come in the room and tell you, hey, I'm here. This is what I have. This is how much I've made. This is what I do. Here's my cars. Here's my houses. Here's my, no, real wealth don't even want you to know what they have. You're walking around real wealthy people and they don't want you to know how wealthy they really are. Real wealth will look as common as they come and you'll be shocked that the place you are living, renting from, buying, that you're trying to get a, a, a place in, they own it. Yeah, so wealth is long-term, riches are short-lived. It's a lot of people who want to live rich but you don't know the tools, you haven't done the work, you haven't discovered what it is to live wealthy. Riches are fleeting. They come and they go. That Gucci that you bought 10 years ago, it came, you can't even decide and determine where it is now. And because they came out with a new style and a new print and they put a rose on it or a bug on it or a frog or whatever else on it, now you don't want that one, you want the new one. And it comes and it goes. You spend $1,000 on a bag that you can't even get $100 for now. It comes and it goes. You're buying, you're buying depreciable assets, but you're not buying things that appreciate. In other words, you're buying things that lose money, but you're not even positioning yourself to gain or to find or increase money. I want to help us, family. I, I, can't, I can't take it anymore. I can't take it anymore. I can't take it anymore. We are limited by the capacity of our own knowledge. And see, there's three categories of people that I'm dealing with us today. Y'all with me? You still with me? If you're with me, say, we with you, pastor. Come on. 
I'm waiting. Come on. We with you. All right. I know it's going to be a rough ride, but I promise we're going somewhere. Categories of people that you need to deal with and that you need to be mindful of. First of all, there's the posturing. Those are the people that look the part, but they don't have it. Yeah, you're a great publicist. You post a lot of stuff. You put a lot of your brands on there. You always want people to know you got on red bottoms. I got on red bottom shoes, but your bank account is also in the red. That's a problem. Then there are the positioned. Now, it's a lot of people in this, in this place. You make a lot of money. You're positioned to have wealth. You, you earn a great deal. As a matter of fact, everybody do this. Put this formula in practice. Take everything, take what you make this year. What, what you made five years ago. It doesn't matter. Multiply it times all the years that you made it. And calculate all the money that you've made in the times that you've made money. Come on, add it up. Take a minute. Tabulate it in your mind. You don't even have to get your paper wrapped. Just tabulate it. Mm, if I made $40,000 a year and I've done that for the last 10 years, that means I've made $400,000. Okay, whatever your number is. Now, subtract what you have saved. And the bottom number is what you've wasted. It's what you've spent. It's what you've used to consume. It's what you've used to acquire things, but things that have no value and things that you can't even tap into now because that money has been spent. It's gone. And you got to make a determination that I don't want to live like this anymore, Pastor. I'm done with this. That's the position. You make a lot of money, but the, the, the catch is not making it. It's keeping it. And there are strategies. You want to know why the last president didn't pay taxes? We all want to hate on him because of it, because there's, there's a lot of dishonest stuff going on. And I very rarely will talk about politics in the pulpit. I, I rarely ever will talk about it. But for this purpose, I think it's going to illustrate a point to you. Because wealthy people have figured out strategies that are legal loopholes. And they understand how to accumulate wealth. The wealth of the wicked. Now, I ain't, I'm going to drop it. I ain't going to push it because there's a lot I could say about that. But the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. The righteous won't learn how to go and get it. Come on, somebody. We would rather lie and steal and take PPP loans. I'm not going to go there today. Wait till next week. I got you. We'd rather go get PPP loans that we just lied about businesses because they gave us a stated capacity. We could actually paint our own narrative and do it outside of the integrity of truth and righteousness and go and spend it on stuff that doesn't even produce wealth. Help us, Holy Ghost. There's the posturing, there's the position, and there's the powerful. Those are the people who have wealth and don't tell you. Because they have three things, the three L's. This is what everybody, this is what I aspire for. I want liquidity, longevity, and I want legacy. I want the three L's in my life. I want liquidity, longevity, and I want legacy. I want liquidity. In other words, I need cash. Cash is king. Credit is the queen. I want liquidity. I want to be able to go access some money. If I need something and I need it now, if it's an emergency, if it's a pandemic, I'm okay. I need to be able to go get some of my money. I want longevity. I want wealth that lasts. I want things that have long-term effects. I want things that have long-term outcomes and benefits. And I want legacy. I need to leave something for my kids. Some of you, when they read your will, they will stand in a test to this dynamic. They will say, being of sound mind, they spend it all, and that will be your legacy. All your children will get are the plants that they put on your grave. Help us, Jesus. Here's the Bible. Come on. Let's get back to the Word, all right? I got to do this quick now. I got to get out. Luke 16 and 10 says, whoever can be trusted with little can also be trusted with much, and whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dis dishonest with much. When you know better, you have to do better. In Hosea 4 and 6, my people are destroyed because they don't take the time to get knowledge. My hope is to teach you foundational truths all about money this month, scriptural references, scriptural foundation to make sure that you understand this is what the word of God says and here's how it looks in practicality. That's why I'm bringing in professionals, bringing in my financial planning team. They're from all over the country, from Merrill Lynch. They have helped me for the last 20 plus years. I'm bringing them to teach you, to talk to you. I'm bringing in millionaire businessmen, some of them right here in our congregation, to equip you, to teach you about real estate, to teach you about the wealth and the, and, and the accumulation of it and the, and the use of it. My hope is to teach you foundational truths about money from a scriptural practical perspective so that you can build yourself up. I don't want to just tear you down. I know I beat you up pretty bad, 
but I want to build you up. I can't leave you like this. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a preacher of the gospel. I got to give you the good news. And here it is. No matter where you are, no matter how far you've fallen, no matter what situation you find yourself in or any poor decisions you've made, it's not too late. It's not too late. God will redeem the time. He will literally blow your mind. And in one day, he can restore everything that you squandered over a whole lifetime. That's the kind of God we serve. Your house will be paid off supernaturally. God will do some things divinely. If you do it God's way, God will do what God does his way. And there is hope. He will blow your mind. But this is what it's going to require. Get ready. Right. Here we go. Discipline. Principles and standards. You got to follow a disciplined structure. You got to have principles. You got to have standards. You cannot waver. You got to make a decision. I'm going to do what God wants me to do. You got to have principles and standards, and you got to follow those principles and standards with discipline. You got to have determination. It's not easy. You're going to have to work at it. It's not easy. Determination, I'm determined. For my children's sake, I'm determined. For my grandchildren's sake, I'm determined. I'm determined. I'm determined. I may have to give up and make sacrifices. I may not be able to look like I want to look to impress people that will not help me when I'm in trouble. I may have to sacrifice some of the trinkets and some of the things and some of the... I may have to do this, but you got determination because you know what's in front of you. You know where you're going. And then lastly, you got to have dedication. In other words, you got to have consistency. You cannot waver. It must be consistent. You can't do it for a short time. You can't do it for this year. But it may take you 10 years to build what you're trying to, to build because you've seen it in your spirit. You got to have these things in place. So I brought this text to you. And then I'm done. Matthew 17, 24 through 27. I brought this text. I'm going to bring out these truths because I want you to see it for yourself. This is how God is going to bless you in this season. This is what he's about to do for you. This is the increase in the favor you're about to walk in. This is, this is the evidence and the confidence that you need to move forward in. Here it is, real simple. After Jesus and his disciples arrived in Capernaum, the collectors of the two drachma tax, temple tax, came to Peter and said, hey man, does your teacher... Does he pay his tax? You know, they were looking at every turn and in every way, they always wanted to discredit and disqualify Jesus. Anything that they could use to try to bring down the authenticity of his, of his testimony, of his word rather, and of his teaching, they would use it. So this was a very loaded, very slick, very sly question. Hey man, does, uh, does Jesus pay his taxes? And of course, Peter in confidence Knowing what their, their motive and their motivation was, Peter says, yes, he does. But then Peter left like most of your friends would do and went straight to the house where Jesus was so he could tell Jesus, hey, man, they're asking about if do you pay your taxes. But watch what happens. When Peter came to the house, Peter didn't even get a chance to open his mouth to speak. Jesus spoke first. Knowing what Peter was about to ask, knowing what Peter was thinking, knowing what the situation or the crisis was that Peter was in or that he had come to know. He knew the crisis. Watch this. Peter did not even get a chance to speak. Jesus spoke first. Watch what he says. He says, what do you think, Simon? From whom do kings of the earth collect duty or taxes? From their own children or from others? Now, I don't want you to miss this. When Peter ran in, Peter ran in with a crisis. But before Peter could speak, Jesus already addressed the crisis. Did you get it? You missed it. Come on back. Come on, walk with me. No child left behind. I got you. Watch this. When Peter ran in, Peter ran in because there was a crisis. They're trying to get you. They're trying to come after you. They're looking at your money. They're watching your hand. But before he could even get it out of his mouth... Jesus made sure he knew, I already am aware of your crisis. Whatever your situation and circumstance, wherever you find yourself right now, whatever your financial picture, whatever your net worth, whatever your bottom line, whatever your gross receipts, whatever your value right now, God says, don't worry, it's a crisis to you, but I'm already aware of it. Not only am I aware of it, I'm on top of it. So before you can even utter it and bring it to God, Jesus says, hey, I'm cool. I already know what you're dealing with. 
I know how bad it is. I know the mistakes you've made. I know the money you've lost. I know how you've squandered opportunity. I know how you've lost and mispositioned yourself in riches and not wealth. I see where you are. That ought to be good news. I can shout right here because I've made some very bad mistakes in my life. But to know that God knows my mistakes, yet he loves me. That he still sees good in me. That he still wants to fellowship with me. That he still will talk to me. That he'll still instruct me. That he'll still cover me. That ought to be shouting news to somebody right here. And then look, watch, pay attention to what he asks. He says, what do you think, Simon? From whom do the kings of the earth collect taxes or duty in taxes? From their own children or from others? See, what do you think? What do you think, Simon? What do you think? What do you think? As a man thinketh, thinketh in his heart, so is he. What do you think? Watch this. Before he deals with your hand, he has to deal with your head and your heart. What do you think? He needs to know where you are. Where is your mind? Who is your confidence in? What is your understanding? Do you have the understanding that I've given you? Or are you understanding from a world vantage point? Are you seeking to know more about my way? Or are you seeking to do it your own way? Are you more consumed with what's happening on the outside? Or are you dealing with what's happening on the inside? What do you think? He wants to know where is your head? Where is your heart? Because I'm getting ready to bless your hand, but I got to check your head and your heart to make sure your hand can handle it. He says, he, he, from whom do the kings of the earth collect duties? Then he goes on and Peter replies, he says, from others. Then Jesus answers and says, well, the children are exempt. The children are exempt. The king's children, the children of the kingdom, the people of God are exempt. We operate on a different economy yeah get that you are exempt there are things that happen in the world and in a world system a monetary system of the world that do not make sense in the kingdom system yeah and the bible says hoard all i mean the world would say hoard all and take all you can and keep it all for yourself and god says blessed are those who give it is more blessed to give than it is to receive so so give and it shall be given unto you press down shaking together running over i'll cause your haters to pour into your bosom see our system is different than the world system that's why the world can be panicked but we'll still be praising that's why the world can be turning upside down e economically, but we're still calm and cool and collected. It's because we don't operate on the world's economy, but we, we operate on a kingdom economy. He said the children are exempt, but, verse 27, but so that this we may not cause offense, so that we don't upset the status quo. This is what we're going to do. We're going to pay these taxes. So that we... Do not cause offense. In other words, we're not of this world, but we still have a responsibility to operate in this world. Here's the thing. We don't want to be offensive to people. We don't want to be offensive because with loving kindness have I won thee, saith the Lord. I can't win you with offense, but I win you over by being loving and being kind and being generous. But God, we don't even have the money. How you want us? I don't know. You don't want to be offensive. I'm, trying not, I'm not trying to offend them, but I really just don't have it. He says, don't worry about it. This is what you're going to do. Verse 27, pay attention. Go to the lake, throw out your line, take the first fish you catch, open its mouth, you'll find four drachma coin. Go, hold on, God. J Jesus, teacher, master, this ain't making sense. Rabbi, I don't get it. I'm saying we don't have the money. You don't want us to be offensive. You want us to pay the tax. We don't have the money. We don't have the resources. He says, this is what I need you to do. Pay attention. Go to the lake. Throw out your line. Take the first fish you catch. Open his mouth. Four drachma coin will be in his mouth. Jesus, you ain't listening to me. I didn't say, I, I didn't say we hungry. I didn't tell you we needed a fish dinner. I didn't tell you we want fish sticks. I, didn't, I said we need money. Lord, we need money. He says, you're not listening to me. Go to the lake, throw out your line, take the first fish you catch, open its mouth, and four drachma coin will be inside of the fish's mouth. See, here's what I need you not to miss. God's instruction, his instruction will sometimes feel and sound foolish, but it makes God sense. 
And when it makes God sense, it makes sense. Y'all get that? I think you missed it. God sense with an S will make God sense with a C. It may not always happen the way you think it's going to happen. God is going to bless you in unusual ways. When God blesses you in this next season, in this new season, in this post-pandemic season, when God blesses you in this I came to myself season, when, I, when God blesses you in this I've got revelation of who he is and what he's capable of season, then it will not happen in the usual manner, but God will do it in some unusual ways. Here's the problem. You don't trust him. He says, if you're going to be with me, I'm going to need you to trust me with all of your heart and lean not to your own finite, small understanding in all of your ways. Even in how you deal with, think about, and have, have strategy regarding money, I need you to acknowledge me and I will direct your path. The problem is you're trying to make sense of something that will not make sense because you're not making God sense, which translates into God see sense did you get that it may not happen the way it always happened he will tell you to do things that feel strange wait a minute you're saying if i want to get i need to give you said if i want to receive i need to be generous you say if i want to reap a harvest i gotta sow that don't make sense i'll have more if i sow more or give away more what are you saying lord that don't make sense you said, bring my tithe. You said, bring the whole tithe. You said, bring my first fruit. You want me to pay you first? That don't make sense. And he says, yeah, it doesn't make sense because you don't trust me. Your confidence is in your stuff. It ain't in your confidence in your hair did, your nail did, and everything did. But your confidence ain't in me. Your confidence is in Nikkor and ComEd and people's gas and energy, but it ain't in me. He says, you know, you, you ate your first fruit and the fish or the first fish. It's not accidental that he said, get the first fish. You ate the first fish and the first fish had your divine blessing in it. You ate the first fish and the first fish had your miracle in its mouth. But you ate it. You ate your first seed and your first seed was going to develop a whole forest on your behalf. God is going to do it in unusual ways. Take it. Then he gives instructions. I'm done. This is it. Come on, Jason. I'm, this is it. I'm out. Tic-tac-toe, I'm out. Here it is. He says, take it. And give it to the people. Give it to them. For my tax and yours. When you find this miracle, when you look in the miracle, and you look in the mouth of the fish and you get the miracle, take it. Pay your taxes. Pay the taxes. Watch this. Pay my taxes and yours. Notice the order. Honor me and then take care of you. God still requires you to honor him. Will a man rob God? Yes. How? In tithes and in offering. He says, honor me and I've given you more than enough to take care of you. Pay my tax and then pay yours. From the miracle that I manifested that you collected. Yeah. I told you to brace yourself. <laughs> it is God who gives you the capacity to produce wealth. I gave you everything you needed to produce it. Yet, you forget about the one who gave it to you. It still requires honor. It still requires obedience. And some of us won't obey because we don't understand. Here's the problem. God's thoughts are not your thoughts. God's ways are not our ways. As high as the heavens are from the earth, so is God from mankind. His thoughts from mankind. No, you don't understand it. And no, you may not ever understand it. Senior saints used to say it like this. He'll understand it better. Bye, bye. Some things he manifests later in time and in season so that you understand the reason behind it and he gives closure and confidence but he wants you to have confidence first of all in him I need to know that you trust me because if you don't trust me then you won't honor me if you won't honor me then I can't trust you to to do what I need you to do with what I want to give you want to give you 
Beloved, above all, my desire is that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. God wants you to be blessed. He wants you to live abundant life. I want you to be blessed. I want you to have everything that God has for you. I want you to make a decision that you're not going to eat your first fish, first fruit, first seed, and rob your children and your grandchildren of the ability to live an abundant life. We as a people commonly leave struggle and strife because we leave so much lack and debt. God says, I got, a, I got another way for you. I got another way for you. Some of you will say, well, it's because we're culturally disadvantaged. In many ways, that's true. Some of us will say, well, because we were brought to this country, especially blacks, we brought to this country and we were given a huge disadvantage and we built the wealth of the white on our backs with free, as free labor. Very true. Some of you will say, well, it's because the socioeconomic system is set up to keep us out. All true. Find truth in every, everything, every comment that you can make. You're going to find some truth in it on either side. You'll find some truth. But let me tell you one truth that you cannot discount. God, I've been saying it since last March, is still God. He's still God. And he still honors his righteous people. And he's still able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think. The enemy might try to keep you out, but God will take the door off the hinges to let you in. He uses the foolish things of this world to confuse the wise. He will have your enemy, your haters, your blockers scratching their head trying to figure out, how did you get in? How did you do that? How did you, what did you do? And you'll be able to turn around at the conclusion of this season and say, I didn't do nothing. I just used what he gave me. I used divine principles. I put the strategy of the word together. I did practical work. I learned, I studied not just for spiritual understanding, but even for practical application. So all I can say is, it's the Lord's doing. <laughs> that is marvelous in my eyes. I've held you too long. But we got a great month ahead of us, family. It's going to be good. Good. So good. And I'm so excited for you. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word. Thank you for reminding us of who we are and whose we are and what you're capable of doing on our behalf. God, at the beginning of this series, let us do this first. We repent. We don't just say we're sorry, but we turn from our frivolous and foolish ways. We realize and acknowledge and admit our own fault in our circumstance. That many of us have wasted and squandered the wealth that you handed to us. And that you blessed and favored us to be able to accumulate and accomplish. And we repent. We turn from impoverished thinking. We turn from our own selfish fleshly ways. We turn from our own desire to impress people over you. We turn from our own desire to feed our desire to be seen over our desire for you to see us and call us righteous we repent God we failed we've fallen short and we want to be honest about it because we know that you're a restoring God and that if we repent of our sins you are faithful to forgive and that you'll take them and cast them into a sea of forgetfulness and remember them no more God now we ask that you would unlock heaven that you would release abundance and increase and favor will fall on our households and that our children and our children's children will be beneficiaries and benefactors of the blessings that you have already promised to your children. That the blessing of Abraham will fall upon our household. That increase will be the order of the day. That our children will know nothing else but abundant life. We thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus that every demonic attack that has been on our bloodline that the spirit of poverty will be broken. Break the back of poverty right now in the name of Jesus. 
We claim victory over anything and everything that the devil has thrown at us that has kept our minds consumed and caught up in mammon and materialism. We cancel every demonic thing that has spoken through commercial ads, things that have caught our attention through the, the entertainment and the media mountain. We cancel the voice of the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ. And we believe with great faith and confidence that our latter will be greater than our former. That the days that are ahead of us are going to be better than the days that are behind us. That the spirit of poverty and lack will no longer tiptoe around our door. We plead the blood of Jesus over our increase that it will be sanctioned, ordained, and protected. God, we claim that we will no longer be like King Achan and we will not put anointed things which are conditioned to be destroyed in our things. But that those things which belong to you, we will render unto you. God, that we will walk in integrity and we will stop being thieves in the temple. And we'll stop stealing and robbing even in the world. But that we want to be a righteous people who does it through righteous ways. Because we've got so much trust and so much confidence in you that we have no need to walk outside of integrity. Thank you that you will supernaturally give us strategy. We might find coins in places that we didn't even know we could. Places that confound others, that cause other people to scratch their head in bewilderment and wonder. We thank you that we're going to find coins and strategy in places and ways that are unusual to the minds of people. Thank you that you are the kind of God that keeps your promise. Thank you for a spirit of liberty. Spiritual liberty. Emotional liberty mental liberty physical liberty financial freedom you said that whom you set free will be free indeed release us God release us into your power and into your care in Jesus name come on shout it in the chat room in Jesus name I'm super excited for you I hope you feel it I'm so excited for you God's about to do a new thing in a new season and this is the one thing that you're going to have to have. You need salvation. You need to be rescued and redeemed from the hand of the enemy. It is the enemy that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. You want to know why? You, you pay for one thing and something else break down? Because the enemy wants to keep you in a place of discouragement. But when you know who your savior is, you know who your rescuer is, your redeemer is, you don't fret those things, the evildoers. No, you don't even mess with that. You just know in faith that God's going to work all things together for your good. That's what you know. When you know, you know, you know. When you know, you know, right? You know. And so if you don't know, I want to help you to know. I want you to know this Savior. I want you to have a personal relationship with him. I want you to receive him in your heart. Here it is. It's simple. This is all you do. If you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart the Lord Jesus was raised from the dead, you shall be saved. He calls you his own. He claims you as his child. And then beyond that, he gives you abundant life here and everlasting life there. We all will leave this earth. We take out insurance policy, but you need an assurance policy. You need to know that your soul will spend eternity in the presence of God. And it's as simple as this prayer. If you want to pray this prayer, if you want to receive Christ in your heart, if you want to know that you have a relationship with a God who is your Savior, pray this with me. Say, Lord, no, 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 no. Say it, everybody. We all say it together because we're family like that. Lord, thank you for this day and for preserving my life for this very moment. Say, I admit I made some mistakes, but I'm so grateful that you forgive me. I believe you were born. I believe you died. Here's the part. And by faith, I believe you were raised from the dead. And with this confession, I'm excited to say, say it with confidence, I am saved yeah come on family you're celebrating the break in the chat room in the break room wherever you're watching celebrate right now there are some people whose souls have been added to the kingdom and whose eyes are going to be better and never the same in jesus name father god in the name of jesus for every man woman boy or girl under the sound of my voice who has received you as savior on this day at this moment surround them with your spirit with your grace with your power with wisdom Help them to walk according to your word and your way and get the glory. Protect them and shield them. Give them spiritual discernment. Let them see who they need to release and what they need to hold on to. Go with them and guide them. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. Come on, clap it up. Clap it up in the chat room. Come on, clap it up. Yeah. Did you feel it? We're going to do this things God's way. Hidden figures will be hidden no more. We are shining the light on some hidden figures because we want to bring truth into your circumstance, every circumstance of your life, including the area of your finances. Amen. Listen, there's some announcements coming. God's going to speak some new things and some great things and celebrate what we're doing in this season. And I'm just excited that you are a part of it. Don't move. Don't go anywhere. Please stay with me. And when you come back from the announcements, I'll close us out. We'll leave together. Don't leave without the blessing. I got you. Watch this. Hey there. Thanks for joining us online at Victory. We are so glad you chose to worship with us today. We pray today's message brought you hope, healing, and empowerment. We want to connect with you. So if this is your first time joining us or you would like to connect with Victory in a greater way, text CONNECT to 38470. You can also visit our website at getthevictory.org. Also, be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for daily inspiration and encouragement. And while you're at it, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to catch up on all the latest sermons. Your giving makes a difference, and Victory has made giving simple. Text Get the Victory, Get the Victory BC, or Get the Victory VC to 77977. Select the giving link, enter the amount, and gift type. If it's your first time giving, you can enter your payment details. Then simply confirm your gift. You can also cash app Get the Victory by downloading the app in the Apple or Google Play Store. Community is happening at Victory, and life groups are the way that we enjoy life together. Build meaningful relationships through small groups based on common interests, and you can get connected to community even in this virtual season. One of the reasons I started the Chess Mates Life Group was I wanted to show the relationship between chess, religion, and empowerment. The Sister Circle Life Group was created to give single women a voice to express her deepest concerns in a safe environment. The reason I chose to be in the Sister Circle Life Group was I was looking to build more relationships with more sisters in Christ. The new Life Group Confidence. Being a part of this group, it has really helped me. Confidence is about single parenting, divorce, dating, finances. Building healthy relationships, having a listening ear, showing love and support. Let's build in your community and my community. Let's spread the healing all over the world. Get connected to community. Visit our website at getthevictory.org to sign up for a life group today. Victory is there when you need prayer. And now our daily prayer line is back. Dial in and join our prayer team Monday through Friday at 6.30 p.m. For more information or to submit a prayer request, email pastoralcare at getthevictory.org. Until next week, Victory Walkers, keep walking in victory. Hey, family, I hope you had an incredible time. I had a phenomenal time. This was the kickoff of a great series. I hope you feel it. I feel it. I feel like some businesses will be born as a result of this. Some lives will be changed. Legacy will be left in greater capacity. God's going to equip you with some foundational truths. I'm going to give you some spiritual principles and practical application. I'm bringing some professionals in, some, some people to talk to us this month. Stay tuned. You got to be with me. You got to ride with me. I know it's uncomfortable, but it's going to get better, and God's going to do some great things as a result of it. Thank you for hanging out with me. Thank you for walking in victory. All my victory walkers around the globe, I love you so much. I cannot wait wait i promise you i cannot wait until the pandemic is lifted so you can tell me where to go and i can come and fellowship with you personally i promise you you have my word i'm coming to each one of your territories i'm coming it may take me a while to get there but i'm coming i'm coming to hang out with my victory walkers because you guys are the army of people who pray for us who celebrate what god is doing here so that we can continue to minister to you there thank you and you've been sowing I just want you to know your seed is not in vain. We are building. We're getting more technology. We're putting more lights in. We're doing because I want to bring you the best quality and the best ministry I possibly can. I'm building music ministry. I'm doing a new CD, okay? I'm letting the cat out of the bag. I'm about to do a new CD, all right? That's coming. And the church is about to do a new CD. We got a praise and worship thing. It's so much. It's so much. It's too much. I've kept you long enough. It's time to go. You ready? 
<laughs> Here we go. Before I go, though, watch this. Um, let's see. Uh, I was born by the river in a little tent. Seems like that river has been running ever since. It's been a long, long time coming. But your change is about to come. <laughs> hidden figures will be hidden no more. God's about to do a new thing in a new season. Get ready. Here we go. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for what you've done, what we've seen, and what you said. Thank you for the increase that is about to blow up in our lives. Thank you for the financial prosperity and health and wealth that will come as a result of your teaching. Thank you for your truth. Thank you for reminding us of who we are and who our God is. And continue to unlock our thinking change our mind now may the grace the love and the peace of our lord and savior jesus christ rest rule and abide with each and every one of us not just now but forevermore in jesus name in jesus name come on in jesus name shout hallelujah and amen you are blessed have a phenomenal week i'll see you next week